Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading slash writing slash life vlog, I guess. Uh, I've already filmed some of this vlog, but I realised I'd forgot to shoot an intro. It is all from today anyway. I missed a few days out because uh, my my camera batteries died and I couldn't find my charger, so I had to buy a new one. But it's a USB charger now, so it's actually more portable, so that's always good. Alright, cue the footage. Biggie. How are you? Yes. It, uh, I haven't vlogged for a few days because my camera batteries died and I lost my charger. But now I have my camera and so we're going to head out into the rain because I have to take Bex to the train station. I my bum. No, I wasn't showing your bum, it's on my face. Do you want to, you can say hello though, hello. <laughs> Hi, we're going to the train station, goodbye. Oh, it's fucking horrible. Ugh. Hey Biggie. I need to do the washing up. Uh, as it's been a few days since I've been able to film, I have a few books that I've read to update you on. I don't think I mentioned this one. So this is Tinder Nightmares, presented by Uninspirational. And basically these are just like awkward messages that have been sent on Tinder. Uh, so uh, this is from Harrison. Harrison said, can I be completely honest with you? And his Tinder match said, sure thing. And he said, I want to spread I can't believe it's not butter all over your kneecaps and slide you down a bowling lane. So Tinder, dating app, you've probably heard about it. Uh, yeah, and it's just presented sort of like this. So, there we go. Have a read of that. I mean, it's kind of uncomfortable to read at times because it's basically just guys being dickheads, but I mean, that's what you get on dating sites, basically. So, um, it kind of reminded me of Bob's and Virgin by Cam C. Wolf, who is here on Booktube as Wolf Shop Publishing. Um, but here's like thirsty Instagram comments where these are like thirsty Tinder messages. Overall, I mean, I got it from a, for a pound from a charity shop and it was all right, but I don't know if I'd recommend it other than that. Then I read The Blue Fox by Sean. So Sean is an Icelandic author. He actually writes lyrics for Bjork. And this, uh, let me read you the blurb actually, because it's probably the best way to do it. The year is 1883. The stark Icelandic winter landscape is the backdrop. We follow the priest, Balder Skuggerson, on his hunt for the enigmatic blue fox. And just as the priest pulls the trigger, we are swept away to the world of the naturalist, Friedrich B. Friedrichsen, and his charge, Abba, who suffers from Down syndrome. When she was found shackled to the timbers of a ship run aground in 1868, Friedrich had fortuitously come to Abba's rescue. The fates of all of these characters are intrinsically bound and gradually, surprisingly, unraveled in this spellbinding fable that is part mystery, part fairy tale. And... This reminded me a little bit of The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, except I actually enjoyed The Blue Fox and I didn't like The Alchemist. I'm sorry, I know everybody likes The Alchemist. I didn't agree with them, like most of the messages in it, and also it had one of the worst cases of insta love I've ever seen, but that's by the by. So my bedtime book at the moment is The Last Wish by Andrei, uh, Andrei Shabowski. I can't pronounce names at the moment for the best, the, the best of times. See, I can't speak. Uh, I started reading this and basically I wasn't really enjoying it to begin with so I switched it out to my bedtime book and I'm pleased to admit that now I am this far in I am kind of enjoying it I don't know it's, it's still at best it's like a 3.5 out of 5 for me though and I must I am a little bit disappointed um, just because I've heard really good things about this series and for me it's it's okay it's like it's okay fantasy um, I think actually the appeal here is that it's translated fantasy for me at least anyway like I've never played the Witcher game, so I don't have that to base it on, and so perhaps I'd enjoy it more if I had. But really, for me, that's kind of why I wanted to read it, just to read some translated fantasy. And, um, it's alright, you know. <laughs> I'll finish it soon, so I'll, do, I'll have fuller thoughts. I doubt I'll do a review on it, though. But, um, yeah. And I'm currently reading The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. I'm about 200 odd pages in. And, uh, this is a buddy read with Anthony Andrews. I'm just, I've just gone into part three. Yeah, in fact, literally, I'm at the start of part three. Um, a spoiler alert here, because I'm filming this while Anthony hasn't got to the end of part one yet. So basically, this is sort of historical fiction, set in Amsterdam, really beautifully written. And this actually reminds me of another book I didn't like. This reminds me of um, uh, The Shadow of the Wind, which I'll, I'll tell you about the comment I got in a minute. But um, yeah, 
So this reminds me of the Shadow of the Wind in that it's really beautifully written, but unlike the Shadow of the Wind, I'm actually like enjoying the story itself and I'm really just I'm hooked and I can't can't stop reading it really. Whereas uh, Shadow of the Wind was a struggle, but it's it's got I think if you liked one, you'd like the other. Um, it also reminds me of Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier, possibly just because it's historical fiction. It's really good at setting this sense of place. Uh, I mean, I've been to Amsterdam like four or five times now. I, it's one of my favourite cities in the world, and. It's just great to see all the sort of the Dutch place names, some of the Dutch words, the actual sort of plot of the miniaturist. Basically, this girl marries into this family. She's got a new husband and uh, she's got like a miniature doll's house. And uh, this miniaturist starts sending her little pieces. And I'm yet to actually see how this is going to resolve because this could make or break the book. Um, basically, she's tracked down the miniaturist to this house and uh, there was a woman inside. So she's like, the miniaturist is a woman. But the more interesting thing is, is that this person's like sending her models that she hasn't asked for, hasn't paid for, and they're very specific. Like they're the people inside her house, and uh, like the dog, she got the the spot on the dog's body in the right place and stuff, um, which kind of implies that maybe she's she's watching the house. Whether that's the case or not, I don't know. At the moment, there's no explanation for it, and so what that explanation is will determine for me whether I enjoy this book. I think, however. Alongside that we have all of the, the social intrigue of this family that she's married into so and at the end of the first bit This is the bit where something happened and at, th at this point I was like wow Okay, I have to finish reading it now where basically she goes to track down her husband and she goes inside and um, He's getting a blowjob off a man called Jack Jack Phillips um, Who by the way at the end of the second part? He just got stabbed poor Jack although apparently we're not supposed to like Jack because nobody likes Jack and I'm not sure why I mean, I get that maybe the, you know, the person we're kind of seeing the story through her eyes, the main character, she doesn't like him because he was given her, her husband a blowjob. But I don't know why all the other characters don't like him. Maybe I missed something. But yeah, because of all this intrigue and stuff, and especially because of the time it was set in, I just find it really interesting to see what's going to happen next and how are they going to react to it. And, you know, will society ever find out? And if so, what will they do? Who knows? So yeah, I'm going to continue reading this and uh, I'm going to quickly haul a book and then do a little bit of editing, I think. This is very exciting. I can now finally film my wrap-up. I made Korean quinoa bowl with barbecue sauce. And Bex is here. Oh, I won't put you on camera though, don't worry. What are we watching again? Hereditary. Hereditary, that's it. It's out of focus. You're not under my dressing gown. Yeah. Good boy. Uh, up we get. Basically, either this video or that video is going to go out depending on the decision that I make today because I've really got to make a decision. Hey, Google. So let me explain first of all Pause. Um, where I'm coming from. So I'm, I'm talking about my. Emma's start making her audio book, but I haven't watched the video yet to find out why. But uh, she inspired me to try and make my audio book as well, so that doesn't bode well. Uh, all right, it is Monday. Um, yeah, I haven't vlogged for a few days because again because my battery died uh, And then my mental health hasn't been super great as well um, I am going to quickly update you on some of the books that I've read though, so I am um, I'm actually counting this as read even though I haven't read it uh, Specifically this time so this is Circe and the Cyclops by Homer and the reason is this is from um, a part of the Odyssey and I read the Odyssey last year, so I don't really feel the need to read this specific uh, excerpt again just to sort of say that I've read it when I have already read it if that makes sense so I drop that down there uh, we have Tomorrow here by Joseph Conrad so um, this one is number 64 the Penguin Little Black Classics set in a desolate English port Comrade Spare Savage Turn of the Century Story of Lives Haunted by the Sea and um, I read this as my bedtime book. I wasn't actually sure whether I was going to like it or not, but in the end I did enjoy it. I think what it was is that I'd been reading it a bit stop and starty and really I needed to just sit down and just read it in one go, you know? I'd still probably only give it like a 3.5 at best, maybe a 3 out of 5 just because of the, the slow start. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to go back to Comrade. 
The uh, Cersei one I will give like five stars for because the Odyssey, the Odyssey is excellent. But I did say in my review for my website, just read the Odyssey instead. Okay, then I read The Last Wish by Andrei Sapowski. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced his name right, but I did my best. This is the first book in the Witch series and it is all short stories. I've never played the games, so I didn't know too much going into it about uh, the lore or anything like that. So it actually took me a while to really start enjoying it and to wrap my head around all the different characters. Um, although I say all the different characters, there weren't that many, but there were some kind of recurring storylines, you know? And uh, also I, I found it difficult at times to, f you know, figure out uh, the lore behind some of the different creatures and what exactly the creatures were because it wasn't as though they were just using all these super common like orcs and goblins and kobolds or whatever and ogres and stuff that are kind of staples of fantasy there were some more unusual creatures well we got here actually on the blurb as guardian of the innocent Geralt meets incestuous kings with undead daughters vengeful jinns shrieking harpies lovelorn vampires and despondent ghouls many are pernicious some are wicked and none are quite as they appear so yeah I wasn't enjoying this to begin with and then after again after about the first hundred pages or so I started to wrap my head around the language the characters the world and I did enjoy it I'm going to give it a 3.5 I can't give it any more than that and I'm in no rush to read the next book in the series but I probably will at some point if that makes sense then we can count this one completed this is vegan home cooking by Monami Frost she actually has a YouTube channel which I'm going to check out. I think she has about 600,000 subscribers. And um, yeah, it's, you know, vegan food recipes. I quite enjoyed it. My camera's picked up her face and it's trying to focus on her face. Uh, the weird thing about this one is that it's all alphabetical though. So like, there's, there's no, um, you know, it's not like you go through starters and then mains and then desserts or something like that where, you know, a lot of cookery books will have that kind of I don't know, uh, the, the the cookery book equivalent of a narrative, I guess. So, um, whereas this is just literally all alphabetical by title. And some of them are like my grandma's apple pies, which is, you know, a nice title. But it's then a bit weird if you're looking for an apple pie recipe, you'd look under A, you know. And there wasn't even an index, I don't think. But actually, I did still, I think this was pretty good. There's some great recipes. There was tofu scramble there, pizza, smoothie bowls, mango salsa, hearty chimichangas, falafel wrap. Yeah, Caribbean veggie curry, I made that a while ago. So yeah, I enjoyed this. This was a four out of five, even despite that weird little, what's name? Okay, and finally we have The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. And this was a buddy read with Anthony Andrews. And he actually uh, DNF'd it uh, about 200 pages in, I think. I wasn't sure whether I was going to enjoy this. And actually, it's reminded me of a lot of books that I didn't enjoy. But I did really like it. I thought it was really well written, really well executed. There's some really interesting themes in it as well. So, uh, you know, it's historical fiction set in Amsterdam. But we have things, are uh, themes of sort of sexuality, of uh, interracial love. Um, just, you know, even we're looking at things like uh, the, the sugar industry and the import and export of sugar and, you know, what that means to a society, especially one that's starting to get used to, you know, a taste for like Battenberg and stuff. So, um, yeah, I thought it was really good. The characterization was great in it as well. It was pretty dark and depressing at a lot of points. But um, I was impressed by this. And, uh, yeah, four out of five for me. Pretty solid four out of five. I'm not going to attempt to to give it a review, I don't think, because I didn't tab it out as I was going through. But um, certainly one to read if you like either literary fiction, historical fiction, or both. And um, I mean, I really enjoyed as well the fact that it was set in Amsterdam, uh, which is one of my favourite cities. And so there was a lot of Dutch words in there as well. And it was just, you know, really gripping from start to finish. And also I liked how it, it separated into different sort of sections. And something kind of major happens at the end of each section. So it kind of keeps you reading as well. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. So that's where I'm at. I will probably give you a little update in a little bit. I need to go and do some laundry in a bit as well. Um, yeah. Links in the description below. It's easy to navigate. Uh, it's kind of bite-sized. I made sweet potatoes and cumin soup. And I'm watching Bosch. Bish? Bash? Bosch! They got a new cookbook coming out. I made vegan cupcakes. But I gotta go because someone's meowing at me, aren't they, Biggie? Yeah. I just felt like I've been here. I've been here. There you go. 
Hello, it's Tuesday. Um, I just want to give you a quick update on a few things I read. So I finished reading uh, La La Love by Katie Lewington. So Katie is an indie poet. I'm going to read you one of her poems. Here we go. We'll do Paperweight. My partner says to me, his hand a paperweight on my knee. It is amazing what can pass for a poem these days. And slaps down the newspaper he was reading. Considering there is only one poem he can remember and recite, which was published in the 1800s, I don't pay heed to him. Continuing to scribble in the margins of my dry blue notebook, I write in the way I taught myself to. He bought for me a typewriter, so you can have the benefit of writing, but with the speed of a computer keyboard. I thanked him. Just get on with it. So there we go. Uh, there are poems about love, but they're kind of fairly gloomy at times, but also sometimes optimistic. But I think they're quite realistic and relatable poems about love, I would say. Um, so, yeah. I enjoyed this. I would give this a 3.75 out of 5, I think. Um, it's hard to get a 4 or, or above with poetry just because there are usually some misses as well as some hits, you know? So that is that. Um, and then I have been reading Destination Unknown by Agatha Christie. And this is... Let me read you the blurb here. Uh, Hilary, Clay, Hilary, Hilary Craven had finished with life. So when she was invited to go to Morocco to impersonate the dead wife of a vanished nuclear scientist, she decided it might make a more interesting form of suicide than sleeping foot pills. She found herself caught up in a unique organisation which arranged the escape of scientific geniuses to a destination unknown. And it's really quite interesting because it almost reminds me of like Ian Fleming or like one of the James Bond novels or something like that. And there's no Poirot in this, there's no Marple, so this is kind of like a a standalone, unless they come into it later and I'm not, you know, aware of it. But I'm really enjoying it because of that. I mean, it's it's probably only going to be a 4 out of 5 and not a 5 out of 5, you know, but it is interesting and certainly if you're a Christie fan and you haven't picked it up, I would, I would suggest checking it out if you can. Um, the other thing to mention is that I have been going through The Healthy Workplace by Lee Stringer. This is actually the dust jacket here and because uh, I've been you know, I've got to keep going through the book to uh, make notes. Um, I'm not writing in the book. I'm not actually really reading it. I'm, this is for a client. I'm doing a 2,000 words sort of summary of it, sort of spark notes style. So um, I'm kind of skim reading parts of it and flicking through and picking out the bits that seem the most important and then doing an overall kind of review slash summary of, uh, of what this book is about for them. There is an open mic tonight, but I'm not going to go to it because I'm kind of stressed. I don't know if you can tell from the from the way I, I'm talking, but um, so basically um, Bex is in hospital at the moment, which, is, which isn't good. Um, so yeah, she's just been having some pains and stuff, and so she's gone in and they're trying to make a diagnosis and whatnot, but they're not too sure what's going on at the moment. And I haven't really had a chance to talk to her today because of this as well. So I'm just hoping that she's okay. Uh, her dad has gone to kind of look after her as well. But in the meantime, I'm just trying to keep myself busy. Uh, and also, to I'm trying to get some of, some of my work done so that if I do need to go to like, to go, go over to Oxford to, um, to look after her and to make a visit to the hospital and stuff, then, um, you know, I'll have had stuff out of the way, I guess, so. The other thing is, as well, I'm trying to quit smoking again. So I quit smoking last year for about six months, and then I accidentally, I say accidentally, when I went to Spain with my dad, um, I started smoking again. So I'm now quitting smoking again, again. How are we doing? I'm on two, two days, 18 hours. Come on, get into focus. Well, anyway, yeah, there we go. So, so I'm doing all right. So I'm gonna try not to smoke as well. Usually, when stuff are jalapeno flavored, it just doesn't go down that route. That I made caponata inspired the spaghetti. Coconut ones fucking suck. And we got no reckless good. eating on again. Uh, I would actually rate them a one out of five. No good. That zombie apocalypse. Even drunk. This this is I'm much better than zombie apocalypse food. Flavor. I made this sort of summer berry tart thing that I'm trying out with ice cream. I'm well excited. I'm stressed as fuck, so I'm gonna watch Jason and the Argonauts, and I hope that's gonna make things a lot better. Okay. Alrighty, um, yeah, it's been a tough couple of days, really. Uh, my internet went down as well, so I've actually had an engineer out today who's come along to fix it, which has been very useful, so I can get back to work properly. I actually have loads on my to-do list at the moment, so I'll probably be working all weekend. Hey, Biggie. You come to say hello. <laughs> so, 
So where where are we, little man? We're gonna give we're gonna give the people an update, aren't we? So the internet's sorted, so I'll probably be working over the weekend now. Bex is still in hospital. The update is um, basically she's gonna have to have an operation to have her gallbladder removed. So the question. Yeah. So the question is whether um, whether that happens now or whether it happens within the next couple of months. But either way, it's going to happen, which isn't the best news, but at least we know what the problem is. Um, I have been doing some reading, so I'm going to give you a quick update on some of the books I've read. So, I finished reading Destination Unknown by Agatha Christie, which was okay. I kind of mentioned it earlier in the vlog. Um, the interesting thing about it was that it was kind of an action espionage spy novel almost, which is a bit different for her. Uh, it, it started to lose its way a bit towards the end, to be honest. So overall, I'm giving it like a 3.75 out of 5, not quite a 4, but... Um, Certainly worth reading if you're in a, a Christie aficionado. Then I read Julius Caesar and Roman Britain by Eldegard Peach, which is an awesome author name. This is one of the original Ladybird books, and it's literally just non-fiction about the Romans with some um, really beautiful illustrations throughout it as well. About 50, 60 odd pages, so just a short one. But I actually really enjoyed it, and I'm not necessarily collecting these, but I am picking them up as and when I see them in charity shops for reasonable prices, I guess. Then I read How We Weep and Laugh at the... S uh, that was a 3.54 out of 5, by the way. Then I read How We Weep and Laugh at the Same Thing by Michelle de Montaigne. So this is Penguin Mini Black Classic number 29. Glittering essays by the Renaissance Master of the Form. Exploring contradictions in human thoughts and actions. And... I mean, there was a lot of Latin in this, which kind of broke up the flow for me because you had to read the Latin and then read the translation. But it was interesting to see and to see how, like, essays have come along, how thinking has come along. And, you know, I agreed with him on quite a lot of things as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. It's probably no more interesting than a 3.5 out of 5, to be honest. And I actually ended up reading it as my uh, bedtime book because it wasn't really interesting enough to keep me going as, as my main read and then I picked up this is four tales by Philip Pullman and uh, this actually starts with the firework maker's daughter which I've already read so I moved on to I was a rat or the scarlet slippers which was the second story in this and it was okay um, to be honest Pullman is one of my favorite authors but I don't particularly like his sort of explicitly fairy tale kind of writing I like it when he takes fairy tale influences and turns them into something different you know and I guess to be fair he does that with all of his fairy tales but yeah it was all right but it wasn't my favorite um I would give that a 3.5 out of 5 and up next I am about to start clockwork or all wound up and so hopefully I enjoy that one a little bit more but I do really enjoy this edition it's very beautiful and I think it was two pound from a charity shop which is a bargain so yeah that's where I'm at Biggie is on the side in the kitchen for some reason. What are you doing up there? What are you doing? Get down. Uh, well, yeah, it is what it is. So I made uh, homemade falafel burgers with a bit of hum uh, hummus, falafel, and yeah. All right, I'm watching Monami Frost, who uh, I actually have her cookbook, and I didn't realise that she's like a YouTuber with about 600,000 subscribers. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd check her out. It's Saturday morning. I haven't really slept. I uh, heard from Bex about 5 a.m. this morning when she'd, she'd just been awake, awoken to have some injections and stuff, which is uh, no fun. So, uh, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, as for me, I'm going to go into town and hopefully get my hair cut in a bit. What else did I need to do? I need to post a thing to um, some estate agents just to continue my tenancy where I'm living for the next six months. Um, I possibly need to go to a bank and I want to go to Sainsbury's as well and see if I can get some tempeh because th 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 you can't really find it here in the UK. But I found a recipe and I want to use it, but it needs tempeh. So, uh, so there is that. Oh, my computer just pinged, but we'll style that out. 
Um, in terms of reading, I finished in bed last night reading uh, It Was Snowing Butterflies by Charles Darwin, number 67. Exotic creatures and unexplored terrains populate Darwin's account of the Beagle's momentous voyage. So uh, this is interesting because it was literally written, you know, during the, the voyage that kind of inspired him to later write on the origin of species, which I have read. Um, but I hadn't read any of his journal... Stop pinging! But I hadn't read any of his diaries or anything, so it was really cool to, to read those. Uh, probably a 3.75 out of 5, not quite a 4. Then I finished reading Clockwork, or All Wound Up, from this Four Tales book. It was alright, it was quite short, I think it's actually the shortest one in this collection. And my main issue with it, if you can call it an issue, is that it felt as though the entire story was setting up the punchline at the end of the book. But um, again, it was only like 80 odd pages or something, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, and I've now since moved on to the final one in this collection, which is The Scarecrow and His Servant. I'm not going to lie, I think my favourite of all of these is actually The Firework Maker's Daughter, which is the first one, which is the one I'd already read. So that's kind of a disappointment. Um, but The Scarecrow and His Servant is shaping up to be quite interesting as well. And there's, you know, they're just sort of new takes on, on the fairy tale genre, I guess. Which isn't really my favourite genre, so I think that's why I'm not super enjoying them. But I do want to slowly read everything that Pullman's ever published. So, uh, so yeah. Alright. Oh, and in a little bit I'm going to be doing a new tag as well. So I filmed my wrap up and uh, the next thing on my bookshelf tour, I filmed uh, 52, uh, what was it, 52 weird book, 52 nifty bookish questions, uh, I've got the booktubers I love tag to edit and uh, yeah I'm going to film the author tube and practice and theory tag which Todd the librarian has tagged me to do, so yeah, alright, laters. I made Japanese tofu noodles. And I'm watching Monami Frost. She's the one on the left there with all the tattoos. Uh, who is a vegan YouTuber? Spinach and pea soup, everybody. All right, so I'm sitting here watching PewDiePie play The Last Guardian. Hey, Google, pause. And um, I thought I'd give you some updates. So, Bex is still in the hospital, unfortunately. She did have some um, soup today, though. And it was like the first time she's eaten since Tuesday, I think. So that's good news. Uh, might get to go and see her next week. We will see. In the meantime, I've been reading. Um, I, so I finished reading The Scarecrow and His Servant out of Philip Pullman's Four Tales. That one was a four out of five for me. Again, Throughout all of these, I think I read it at the wrong time because I wasn't really in the mood to read fairy tales. That said, I did enjoy that last one quite a lot and I think it was because it was one of the longer ones as well so there was more time for him to uh, sink his teeth into it. Don't mind any background noise, I was just casually slipping it back into the book jacket there. Then I read Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, a sketchy, doubtful, incomplete jottings, number 36 in the Penguin Little Black Classics. It says, the great 19th century German thinkers' musings on self-deceit, superstition, art and ambition. This was a four out of five for me. It's one of those books that makes you think a lot as well. I'm going to read you a few little, little bits from it. So, the advantages accruing to a young artist in this way are indeed manifold. He learns to think out the best way of fitting together related things and, when he thus composes intelligently, he will, in the end, assuredly not lack what is termed invention, the capacity to develop a manifold whole out of single units. Let's do another one. There are people who love and seek out those like themselves and, then again, those who love and pursue their opposites. Let's do one more. People who think deeply and seriously are on bad terms with the public. That sounds a lot like me, I like that. So yeah, I read that, um, and then I've just picked up uh, with what is going to be my Tarden Danes indie read-along book for the month, which is The Method by Duncan Ralston. I'm about this far in so far, and it's about basically a married couple that goes to this uh, like couples retreat for sort of you know marriage guidance, counselling, therapy, and uh, not not everything is as it seems. So so far, I'm only about 50 pages in, and they've got there, and for example, they're they're being filmed, and they didn't realise because they didn't read the small print of the contract. So, uh, and the method refers to the method that is used to sort of save these couples, I guess. So yeah, that is me pretty much up to date. I'm going to love you and leave you now because I think although this has been a, a bi-weekly vlog, um, because my camera wasn't working for a lot of it, I think we have enough now for a full one of these videos. So on that note, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Just before I go, look what I just got in the post. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Cool.